Hey, welcome back to another video. And in this video, we're going to look at using the clipping tool within Twinmotion. It's a pretty simple tool, but has a lot that it can do and really provide a lot that you might want to use as far as viewing your models in a different way, uh, understanding what's going on in section, all of that. You don't have to go through exporting those sections out of whatever modeling program you're using, but we can use this dedicated tool to do that. So before we get into it, if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, which please, I really hope you learned something. That's kind of the point of this. Demolish that like button. It really, really helps me out a lot. Also, I want to say it again. I have submitted to present a class at Autodesk University, and there's a link in the description that if you end up clicking it and upvoting that, class. It should help me out a lot. Give me a better chance to end up teaching it. And that class is to introduce twin motion not only to more people, but as if you were going to introduce twin motion to your firm, how you can most effectively do that and everything you might need to know and would want to know and how to, how you can really bring everyone up in your office in your firm to use twin motion the most effective way possible so you'll benefit from that if you're watching youtube if you just go upvote that that will help me out a lot i'll produce a lot of extra videos that are catered just to that so my hope is that i'll get to teach that and make all those videos for you so let's get into it now we are working with the clipping tool in this video so i'm in just a, a model that i made a long time ago competition and we want to start just you know, getting different aspects, different views, uh, using this particular tool within Twin Motion, so we can, you know, better understand our project at the design. You know, something like that. You want to look at something specific. Yeah, we can always fly somewhere, and we can kind of see what we need to see in that way. But using this tool, you can get a better view of certain things, a specific view, because it's literally cutting through everything, which is great. So here we go. We're going to find this in the tools, of course, because it's a tool. We've got all our fun tools here, but we're most concerned with sections in this video. So look, there's only one option. It's a section cube. I wish we had a little more versatility, but the cube has quite a lot. So when I first click on this and bring it in, you'll see I have this dark, shadowy cube that I'm, you know, basically I'm prompted to place wherever I want. And then this, if you're familiar with placing or, well, moving objects in twin motion, if you use that centered, uh, I guess, origin point of the that gizmo tool, then it's going to end up snapping to faces. So as you see, as, as I like move across this curb, it's going to end up following that curb. And if I come over to this sloped roof, you can see it's following the slope. So, you know, and even a vertical face, it's going to jump to that vertical face. So that's cool. You know, for what this is, it, it being a curb, I don't necessarily, a cube, excuse me, I don't necessarily want this to get to some weird angles because I want it to be a manageable cube. Now, you can always change this later on. You can adjust the size and all that. But, like, if I come to this angle here, it's going to just jump to this angle, which I don't particularly like. So what I'm going to do is just dump it out in the water. And so we have this cube, this section cube. And it's literally just a cube right now, and it's not really doing a whole lot. Now, I'm going to first show you what it does with the water here because you'll get an idea. But uh, So we've got enabled. This is probably the easiest part of the tool, whether it's on or off, whether it's cutting or not. And there's not a whole lot to cut. So at this point, whenever I end up pushing this down and like cutting the water, we can kind of get an idea of what we're working with. So let's go ahead and bring this down. And we can see, yeah, I mean, it cuts straight through the water. There's you know nothing but you know an endless abyss below that. So I'm just getting this water cut, which is kind of the point. It's, you know, it's the cube. And no matter where I am, as long as this cube is cutting the water, I'm going to see that cut which is cool and you'll see color here which is kind of interesting um wherever this is cut we have kind of this border which i am not necessarily a fan of but maybe i mean i can see there's a reason why, why you might want that so we can change this color however we want we can you know maybe make this blue and as soon as we do that you can see yeah there's my blue border so i'll leave it at blue just so it's like super obvious but here the thickness this is another weird thing that I wouldn't have expect to have seen within the section tool or the section cube tool because why do we need a thickness to a section cube? We're just going to like cut where we want and all this. So what we can do now is change this thickness. And you'll see whenever I change this thickness, that blue border gets quite thick. Obviously, we have, have the thickness in inches here, but perhaps one of the very few tools that operates in inches, <laughs> even though and since I've changed it to inches from meters. So here we go. Uh, 
this is a bit weird and confusing. So there's, it's kind of like this buffer, this border, if you will. And as I change it, I mean, you can see it's, it, it's pretty static. Um, but the nice thing is we can actually take this down to zero. And I like this because it gives you this nice smooth cut. And I mean, it's kind of what you would expect to see from any sort of cut tool, a section cut, a section plane, whatever. You know, we, we've seen that in lots of other programs. So this is cool. Now, <laughs> this is probably, this part is probably the most unique function of the tool itself. And I have not seen this function within other section planes or cubes and other types of programs because it just, it seems, in my mind, it's real easy to operate, you know, from a, a building the program type of standpoint, but uh, we just don't see it. And that's the invert. So if I click invert, we can see now I have so much control over this. I have, I can literally do everything that I want because I'm seeing exactly what's in the queue versus what's outside. So like <laughs> it's a section box, if you will, in that it can serve as a cutting tool because literally it's, you know, clipping or it can serve as, you know, a, a particular area that you want to focus on, which is fantastic. And so you have, again, full control over this. As I move this around, we're going to literally see different parts of my model, which is really exciting. So I'm going to leave this off for now so we can kind of move the cube around. But, you know, like, like I was doing before, we can always move it. We can rotate it around it, and the cube itself will respond to the, or the cut itself will respond to the cube and the size and everything. So if you're familiar with all the other different kinds of transforms that you have as far as options and twin motion, you can do that by clicking tab and you can, you can see, you can cycle through scale, rotate and move. So cool. I mean, I can even rotate this and get really weird, different kinds of cuts. Of course I can move it up and around and, you know, we can start to see all kinds of weird stuff, which is kind of exciting. Of course I can reset by clicking that center origin point and then just dragging it to a face. It will snap to a face and, now, at this point, the main thing I want to try is to change the scale. And so, you know, you, otherwise, we're kind of just stuck with this cube that's this size, and I can't really change it. Uh, so, we'll, let's see what happens when I go to the scale. Uh, I have a few different options here, and I can drag them. And you can see we have, you know, it's really what we'd expect. It, it's The visuals are kind of confusing because I don't quite see what I'm used to seeing, but... I think it's because we have a lot more options other than just you know the basics of scaling an object. So if I click on this wall here, that scale is you know in X, Y, and Z. Whereas over here, we have lots more options. You know, where the it is the same X, Y, Z, but it is it's giving us a little bit more, which is great. You know, as far as options, so cool. We have basically unlimited options for the size of this section box, which when I first saw bringing in a section cube that I was a bit concerned that, oh, okay, you know, it's going to be stuck at this size, which is kind of unfortunate. Now, fortunately, it looks like we have the option, as we've already been seeing, to literally determine the, the size that we want. And that's great because, you know, there's a lot of times where this small of a cube isn't exactly what you want. Of course, we want this to be as big as it can be in some cases if we want to cut the whole building because we probably do want to cut the whole building in some instances. So let's go ahead and do that. I want to make sure this is, you know, plenty big so that I can cut and see everything that I need and want to see cut. So very wide sight. There's a lot going on here. And I want to make sure that I do end up seeing everything cut. So I can bring this up and then bring that down, make this as wide as I want. And so really at this point, you know, Obviously, you can see what we're cutting through, which is, you know, it's excessively tall, and it's perhaps overly excessively tall, because it just doesn't need to be that tall. So that's great. Look at that. Like, that's a giant, giant cut, which is cool. And so now I can just move this, and we can see everything that we want to cut. And now I know this is kind of bizarre, but you could, we can come over here and see what it looks like cut, which is really cool. You know, like at this point, this is a great type of rendering. Obviously, it's a in a weird a weird place but you know even farther back here you can see the tiers and and all the floors and the levels and different elevations like this is it's looking pretty cool like this is kind of what we're after um, now the unfortunate part about all of this and this is one of my big knocks on twin motion is that we have orthographic views but they look terrible and it's twin motion says it's it's for 
placing objects. It's it's for uh, orienting yourself. It's not for producing final renderings, which kind of, I mean, again, it's very unfortunate. So when I go to this custom view, we have an orthographic view. If I select something that is here, we have this view, and you know we can see our <laughs> cut, but it looks god awful because it is god awful. Uh, these dark lines just ruin everything. And like I said, Twin Motion says this is only for you know placing objects and and primarily if you go to like the side views or the top view, that that seems to make more sense as to you know what you'd be used to seeing and um, as far as operating, placing something, whatever. So my, all that to say, if I come back to our, our regular scheduled view, we don't have the option of exporting this at as an orthographic view. And by orthographic, I mean something that we can produce the scale. It's, it wouldn't be in perspective, whereas we're basically stuck with perspective at this point. You know, not the end of the world, because this does look pretty good. You're, you're getting the concept across, but it depends on what you're trying to do. If you wanted to produce that scaled drawing, that scaled image, or even scaled rendering, you're not going to be able to do that, at least at this time, at the quality that you want. Now, you can export <laughs> with those dark lines on in an orthographic view, but and it you can scale it, but it just will look awful. So I've never done that, and I wouldn't recommend that you eat, do it either until Twinmotion updates those options to include a fully rendered orthographic view. But based on what we're seeing here, like this is great. Like I love the section. The, this section cube is great because I mean, you, again, you can set it to any size that you want. It's going to operate in any such way. And like I said before, we've got this giant swath of things that we're cutting through. We can get an idea of what's going on everywhere. Um, but really, at this point. What I want to do is invert this, and you can see immediately how how useful this is. So, like, imagine you have your full model, and you just you want to change the size. Obviously, as we change the size and the rotation and everything, we're getting <laughs> these new cuts, which could be kind of interesting depending on what you're trying to produce. But like, we can change the scale, and absolutely everything is going to respond to that. So you can get a really nice, quick section cut, section box uh, view of something you might want to look at and hone in on. And the way I'd probably do that is, you know, if you have all these as, like, specific elements, well, that's its own element. I can just choose that and make my section box over over that, and that's that's cool. I mean, that's really great. And something else that's really nice is that maybe we decide, you know, this looks really great. You know, it, it's kind of in a weird place. But nonetheless, let's say we're, we get to the point where we are really happy with this location of all these cuts, you know, we're kind of seeing everything that we might want to see for this kind of a view. We've cropped it down, you know, again, we're, we're, we're seeing things that we want to. It's kind of cut across the whole site. Cool. And so maybe we want to constantly have the option of referring back to this particular cut, which, you know, you know, we can't really work with the whole scene when it comes to this because I'm only seeing a portion of the scene. So how would we do this? Well, we can do that and achieve this through scene states. And we can find those here. And I have a completely separate video on scene states, so please check that out. But I've got scene states here, and I actually already have some made. But we're going to go ahead and make another one. And I just want to rename this because obviously rename everything so you aren't confused or everyone. And we're just going to call this section queue because that's what it is. And so at this point, we can see, you know, this, at this point, the section cube scene state is responding to all the visibility that I have set up in my entire scene. So in this case, I have the section cube on. So cool, that's that's great. So what we want to do is maybe I click all, and you know all is showing everything with extra effects and all that, but for this all, I want to go ahead and uncheck section box. And so I want to make sure I then come down here to the refresh and just refresh the all. And so now what I can do is maybe I decide, okay, I'm working in this nicer looking, higher quality uh, view thanks to this all scene state. And maybe what I want to do is see my section cube just for a second and see what's there. I can click on that and boom, I, I lose the effects that like really bog down my PC and I can fly around and do whatever I want. And it's all, it has everything to do with the fact that this section cube is visible in the scene state and not everywhere else. So really great. So, I mean, that's kind of it. We've, we've looked at the section cube. There's a lot that we can do. Of course, we can always come back in here and add these these thicknesses, which is kind of interesting because if we have these thicknesses, we can start to highlight specific places in the model that we 
want to highlight, or I guess not highlight in blue, which is kind of interesting. Um, so now that it's all blue, what I can do now, is kind of funny, I can then invert it back and see really kind of where the extents of this is. And so maybe I, what, what I want to do is end up highlighting that edge, which, I mean, this doesn't look particularly great, but I could see some uses to where you might want to do this. Maybe we'd make it more of a red, remove some of the thickness, and we could see literally where our cut lines are, which is kind of the point I would say with this like you're you're getting more out of the cut itself because I just if I bring this down you could see well you know we're, there's no poche you know what, you know what we're used to seeing and wanting to see so if I make this all black again and bring up some of the thickness we do get more of that poche look and I will say it's not actually giving it a poche or a, a true thickness because I, I want to zoom in here on like just over here we could we could see, I don't even have an interior of the wall, just kind of the way things are rendered and operated. But as soon as I give this a thickness, um, I'm give, getting almost like an offset in both directions uh, of this thickness. And it's kind of just bolding that in black, which is kind of interesting. You know, it's nice that it doesn't do it to everything, but I could see some advantage of turning the grass and vegetation black. But, you know, it gives it a nice tint to everything, which is kind of cool. So we can really highlight... Uh, where that section cut is located and you know how it's affecting everything in our model and of course if I revert this back or invert it back I get the exact same thing but just you know I see my model I can always see the extents of the cut with that black kind of poche but you know this is it's pretty good I like this a lot uh, I, I honestly haven't used it enough I'll say that because I just haven't I don't know why but it's really useful it is really useful and um, I sure hope you give it a shot. Of course, you can always enable this, disable this, and, you know, it's still there. It's still there doing its thing. It's just not enabled, which is pretty nice stuff. So really at this point, um, that's kind of going to do it for this video. We've looked at everything that we probably can with the section cube and the, you know, immense amount of versatility we, we have, which is such a simple tool, uh, whether it's getting the pochets, adding these thicknesses, truly inverting to get this section box feel, and then applying that to a scene state so we could constantly reference that back and forth. So really cool stuff. So if you did happen to learn something, which, I mean, probably did. Hopefully you did. Maybe you just liked the video. But anyways, demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. And also, I'll mention it again. I do have that Autodesk University class that I'd hopefully get to teach, hopefully get to be a part of. And with your help, by clicking the link below and upvoting, I think that will give me a better chance. So please do that if you care about any of these twin motion videos and want to see more. So again, that will do it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.